I have to, to, to rewind you a bit, eh? because you've brought up that song. The, f the place where I saw this song is on the Kisima Awards being performed oh, yes. by Hardstone, Kalawashaka, and I don't know even some ladies who I don't even know. So let's go back to Kisima Awards. Was because Nikki there in two? Or? No. I think it was the first Kisima Awards that you guys did. In two might have been yes. part of that performance. Yeah. So let's talk about Kisima Awards because again... I need to know. That's what oh. it was called. <laughs> Good. Yes, and Atemi was in it for sure. I need to know. About da, 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 da. And there was a... Uh, there was like, a, there was like a, an American boy on it at some point. Mm. Yes, oh my. Okay, it's coming back. It's, <laughs> just need to jog that memory. So it's coming back. So Kisima Awards. Kisima Awards, my goodness. Kisima How Awards. How did it even come to be? Actually, Kisima Awards was really birthed by Peter Dera and, and, and Ted Josiah. They had done the first Kisima Awards, a smaller version of it in 95. And it didn't, it wasn't as big, but they had done a version of it. Mm -hmm. And... Then Ted, when I met Ted, in fact, soon after meeting Hardstone, he told me about the Kisima Awards. Mm -hmm. It's like, hmm. hmm. So I went about putting together my event management mind, and we together we designed this thing. We said, no, let's get an award ceremony that really honors people who've, who've young people, or people working with young people, or, ta or who affect young people in different um, spheres of the creative sector. So from comedy to uh, fine art to music to dancing and out of the Kisima Awards actually quite a number of people came out of it and remember I went and got sponsorship from Capital from a whole lot of other people went to the carnival they really supported us and put it together mm -hmm. and people yeah, like you had a long relationship with the carnival eh? huge long <laughs> long and actually that was the first major show we put up at the carnival um, Kyoko Mutiki who's one of the best known um, metal art creators in probably in Africa actually um, we had recognized him then and I remember I used to be a teacher at Upper Hill back in the day even before my time I think or after and he was just so shocked that he was recognized and he was so thankful and I remember he wrote us a letter and I have to find that letter actually now but he wrote us a letter just saying how thankful he was and everything now he's big time you know those metal ninnies you see near the airport yeah, it's those all animals you. this guy is international rolling he has a whole um, he has, a, he, has a, he has a gallery in Lavington. He's he's big. He's big. He's a big deal. Nice. Um, then, uh, fuck, I have to invite you to my birthday party. Um, <laughs> and then we had people like um, I remember Hearthstone performed. He won. It was controversial because hang on, we are organizing. But the votes, we actually hey, like, how, explain how did guys just vote? I have to tell you this. <laughs> <laughs> this I have to tell. Okay, this is an interesting story. Kisima Awards was the first award ceremony in Kenya where people could vote online. <laughs> Do you remember Kelele.com? Yes. Kelele.com gave us a platform and a solution whereby people could actually go online. Online had just started, so to speak. Could go online and vote online. Um, and then people could also, how else could they vote? Call. They could call, yes. There was calling, there was, I think, posting. There was all sorts of things, and we posting. had to put this all together. Posting, yeah. but explain posting because these millennials may think you're talking about the O box. <laughs> the people from Busia <laughs> voting in. It's quite interesting now, and I'd forgotten that actually. Anyway, um, so what we didn't do at the time is hire a, a, you know, an, audit, an independent <laughs> auditor to come. But I just want to assure all our viewers out there, I was an auditor, and I was. <laughs> independent at the time <laughs> but honestly we we what i said i remember to ted and the group i said look if anyone comes to we, we had to keep, we kept all the people said if anyone disputes this we have to have the evidence that mm -hmm. and like for example husband was overwhelmingly selected as artist of the year yeah i mean ohiki was the biggest song of that year mm. um and modern modern Ibuka was one of his backup dancers that show <laughs> by the way FYI, <laughs> um, this is before she became the queen of Nyahunyu, what she called that? Yeah. On Capital. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, who else was there? Who else performed? Um, honestly, you know what? I actually, I've gone blank. Kisima Awards also took time to send out a social awareness message on AIDS, symbolized by the international red ribbon. Capital FM Zane Virgie spoke about what the symbol means and later on introduced a song by various artists put together by Ted Josiah, touching on AIDS. Capital FM 
together with Population Services International, is doing a campaign to raise awareness on HIV and AIDS. And this campaign is going to run for the next six weeks or so. And as part of the campaign, what we've done is to get together with a group of local artists, most of who are here tonight. So, Hardstone, Kalamashaka, Shades of Black, Cyrus and MC Mikey have gotten together with producer Ted Josiah to put together a song about HIV and AIDS. The song is called Show Love and essentially it's a song about raising awareness about HIV and AIDS. And just one more thing, the ribbons. The ribbons are actually the international symbol for AIDS awareness, which is the reason we've been distributing them today and we'll be distributing them all around town for the next few weeks. So show love, wear a red ribbon. So finally, I'd like to introduce you to the artist, Show Love. All right. Are you ready? <laughs> Listen. Lisa, want me say unto you, life can be good and life can be bad. Life could be a joy or it could be a sorrow. You can see today, but you can see tomorrow. It's a son of the HIV big time monster, wiping out my brothers and my sister. Your mama and your papa left down in a sorrow, in a sorrow, in a sorrow, in a sorrow. <laughs> Well, <laughs> Yeah, it, was, it, was, it was what was interesting about Kisima Awards, it was at the end of the year when they're doing the roundup, usually about the year, they said it was the second most covered in the media um, entertainment event of the year. Actually, even a year later, we're still getting coverage. I remember we got so much coverage. What people don't know is that we just broke even. <laughs> I think we made a profit of about 2,000 shillings, which we used to buy burgers and congratulate ourselves, and that was the end. We did not make any money off the SEMA Awards. <laughs> but it was such a phenomenal break into the industry because that set us up. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't lie to you. That set us up big time. Yep. And that's when my father started talking to us, to me again after three months. What? He saw me on TV, so he associated it with making a lot of money. So he said, "Hey, yeah, anyway. <laughs> So this thing you went into wasn't that bad. So he started talking to me again. He had to stop talking to me. He used to send emissaries saying, "I think my son is on Bangi or Mad or something." <laughs> I sent him to the UK to come and auditor. Nini, look what he comes. With. <laughs> then he now, because his friends would say, "Hey, we saw your son on mm. the newspaper on TV." Maybe, just maybe. So maybe this is the trick. If you want to, Nini. Get on TV. Get on TV. No, <laughs> anyway. A night of glamour, happiness, disappointment, and a self promise to work even harder. 
but there was a lot of controversy about the nominations for the awards. David Moredi, one of the organizers, explains the nomination process. We uh, put out questionnaires, effectively, out at various points within the city, and um, we asked or invited people to literally nominate the people they think deserve these awards. So, um, and, and you know, as the presenter said earlier on, this is not a competition, it's a recognition. So everyone's a winner, all the nominees are winners, all the people who weren't named are winners, and uh, maybe next year they'll be named, maybe, you know, but we were saying, effectively, um, the nominations, as I was saying, came, were, literally, were sent in to uh, the Kasima offices. Uh, we had a crew, a team of 10 people who were uh, putting all the stuff onto the computer effectively and, you know, churning out whoever had the highest nominations, okay, effectively won. I mean, it was the people who voted. We had nothing to do with the voting effectively. And that's the way it went. And, you know, you could tell from the response in the crowd, you know, that they were obviously behind behind all the people, you know, including the nominees, when the nominations were read out, you know, people were up and screaming and everything. So, the people decided. All we did was just present their answers to them, you know, their nominations to them. Yeah. The Kisima 97 had quite an impact on the general public, especially amongst the advertising world. Sam Madoka, a seasoned media personality, was one of the guests who presented the awards for TV and radio personalities of the year. I think one has to look at how 1-8 was done, and I think um, my feelings about it was basically that obviously the organizers were limited in terms of uh, financial support, and they could only do it, um, although I had nothing really to do with it, but they could only do it in a small way. I think what needs to happen, what needs to happen is to be a little more national. I think for, for a launch of the event, for one of the first of its kind, it concentrated within Nairobi and its environment. And I think the results were expected to go in that direction. The industry, unfortunately, is prone to a lot of controversies, petty jealousies, and what have you. And it's to be expected. I mean, that's what it's all about, is competition, and you will have people unhappy about it. I mean, no matter what you do. But I think one of the things that the controversy comes about, because people are looking at the national picture, and I think for the first one, it, see, it appeared that it was basically concentrated around Nairobi, among a small group of people, I think uh, that is to be expected. I was not totally unhappy with the, with the nomination. I didn't agree with all of them. But uh, if that's what the people chose, that's what the people chose. And I think we must accept that and look forward to um, a more national representation of an opinion, as it were. So, so that, that, that was the experience of, of Kisima Awards. But it opened up a whole lot of other... Um events, mm -hmm. uh, some of which we'll talk later, like Huma Sekela, Tour of 97, yeah. and a whole lot of events we used to do. So I don't even want to go into the 2000s, I want us to first chill in this uh, pre-2000 yeah. era. So expand nothing better than that Huma Sekela connection. Huma Sekela, <clears throat> together with a guy called Mwangi and Joe Kabiru, they came to me with um, the idea that they wanted to bring Huma Sekela to Kenya, but they didn't have the resources, they didn't, they just knew, they had the contract actually. Mm -hmm from his management company. They said, look, that's all we have. We have no money, we have, let's get together. Joe was one of the best sound engineers. In fact, he was a sound engineer for African Heritage. Mm -hmm. um, and <laughs> the interesting connection is that he was the biological father to Valerie Kimani, <laughs> who ended up managing as my last artist. So, you know, full circle things again. Anyway, um, so I went about putting on my sponsorship hat, my event management hat. I got sponsorship from KQ, from Capital FM, from KTN. I'm, I'm thinking of somebody here who maybe is a manager or, 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 or is in the business side. How do you get these sponsors? What would you go and do? As a manager, one of the most important things I think as a both artist manager and a talent manager and as an event manager is your network. You have to have a network. You have to build your network, especially with corporates. Mm. But remember, I also came from the corporate world. Yes. So I had a slight advantage over many because mm -hmm. I did know people from a corporate point of view. But also, I think that just gave me an advantage that I used, um, that I built on, so to speak. I, you know, there are many who went from the corporate world who did even bigger things. Um, um, I think it's just important to nurture um, the relationships. your corporate relationships, but also brand management. We had a strong brand at the time, just mm. through our artists. Our mm -hmm. artists are what we call loss leaders. 
to be honest, artist management at the time especially did not make much money at all. In fact, it was probably lost. We probably invested more in our artists from an artist manager than really mm. making money off them, to be honest. Yeah. But there were other offshoots that, as you can hear, that made money, you know, advertising and mm -hmm. events and whatnot, that you then end up getting money, but they give you the attention you need, so to speak. And that's what we were known as the people with the youth pulse uh -huh. in our pocket. I get it. And that's what got us jobs at the yes. end of the day. So, but also because of the work that you had done. But you had music, work, you had good the, music. And the quality, it's a, again, it's quality, both the music, the events, the type of artists who are managing, they made sure their brand looked good, you know, make sure they dressed well, you know, they looked good, they, they were professional, even how we handled them on stage, on, off stage, you know, things like that. For example, we used to have this hype thing with Hearthstone and Kalamashaka and Necessary Noise, where you're heard and not seen first. Mm -hmm. So if there's something on stage, you get a cordless mic, <coughs> You drive them near the stage, you clear away, and you start the song when they're not sitting on stage, and they always like Carlson used to jump on stage. If anyone watched Halston back in the day, yeah. just used to appear on stage, like from nowhere, you know, and disappear at the same in the same speed, yeah. so to speak. And we always had a waiting car, because I mean those days artists used to get mobbed. <laughs> I don't know if it happens nowadays. <laughs> but let me tell you, artists used to get mobbed. Like we couldn't walk with Halston in the streets. Even K Shaka, we could not walk with them in the streets without bodyguards. I remember once, <laughs> Hearthstone, uh, on radio, on, on Capital, um, a lady said, oh, my dream birthday wish is for Hearthstone to, you know, just to sing a song for me or something, something, something like that. So we made it happen. And Hall, I think it was Hall 12, we somehow made our way into that girl's, okay, that sounds really dodgy, <laughs> but <laughs> made our way, of course, legally, organized, with, legally. <laughs> organized with student leaders and all <laughs> protocols observed. <laughs> Uh, we made it you know, as a surprise and she opened the door and there was Hardstone and he sang for her and she actually nearly collapsed. Literally, she had to be held. She actually nearly <laughs> collapsed. But let me tell you, we looked behind us and I think the entire Nairobi University wow, was, wow, 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 as in we could not even get out. We had a problem. So the students at least helped us to get, like we were mobbed. Like even getting out of there was, so it was, it was a nice feeling and we used to go to like to schools. Remember we did Limuru Girls, we did um, Lenanas, no, no, it was uh, Nairobi school. And whenever we went, because of this hype we had created, yep. and, and it's about creating the hype, mm. we'd have to go with bodyguards, we'd have to go with, you know, we arrive, and my job as a manager was to be the forward guy. I go ahead, we sometimes go in my car, for example, and just keep everyone in the car. I go out, I go find out everything's okay, make sure paths are cleared, mm. it's okay. Then the artist comes out. So you always came out as, you know, hyped up, yeah, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. It's not like a guy just walks on stage. Yeah. No, no, no. It was really hyped. And that was a lot of fun. And that was, I mean, and what I'm hearing from you, it was very intentional. It was not, it was not really intentional. In fact, I saw, I don't know when it was, I don't know if it was Fladis or whatever. It was something. I remember necessary noise with more bikes coming in, yeah. in, and I'm yeah. just like, this is insane. Yeah, my hypes. My hypes. <laughs> Hype was very important. In fact, you talk of Fladi, something very interesting happened in 97 as well. 97 was the golden year. Lauren Hill. Yeah. <laughs>